Okay, welcome back guys. So, um, purpose of this demo, we're going to talk about our current project that we're on and we're going to talk about line quality. Okay, and the purpose of line quality. Um, there are a couple artists that really inspired and changed a lot about line quality back in, I think, sort of the mid-90s to the late 90s. It had really good thick and thin quality. I learned a lot about thick and thin line quality from working in animation and having to clean stuff up. And so it was sort of a given that the outside line, here's the simple rule, the outside line can be thick and thin, but as a heavier line, your interior lines need to be lighter, period. It's that simple. Because I know everyone in here is listening. I'm going to see someone's work. In fact, I've already seen people's work. I mentioned this last week, and I've already seen a couple projects today where people have the same thickness of line on the inside as they do on the outside. If you do that, you're going to flatten your drawing. You're going to ruin it, and it will not work. It's that simple. That's a particular style by, by, by having heavy weighted lines. It flattens something down, and there's a purpose for that. Okay, That's not what we're doing. Um, a really great artist to take a look at um, that used to do this quite a bit was Doug Chang back in the day when he worked on the original Star Wars remix. Okay, uh, Which number was that? The one with Jar Jar. I always forget. <laughs> Episode 1, right? Thank you. That's what I thought. Um, when he first worked on that, I mean, these were some of the sketches that he did, but I just want you, if you get in here, take a look at the line quality and notice some of the thick and thin line, okay? And this is the thing that I've noticed a lot of students, they're like working in Photoshop and other areas. If you don't have a good pen, okay? If you don't understand Photoshop, don't be using Photoshop. If you can't get thick and thin line quality, look, I have this brush right here. I'm in blue, 100% opacity. Look, thick, and then I can get down and get thinner. Do you see that? Now, it's getting pixelated because of the image size. I'll cover that in a minute. That's because that's just a low-res image that's getting pixelized. But if I bring it down a little bit smaller, draw on it, you can see how I can get thick and thin contour line very easily because I just have a nice brush that works very well. Okay? In Doug's work, you will see thick lines. Let me switch to red so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay? Hold on. Let me switch the other color to red. There we go. So, in a lot of Doug's work, you're going to see some thick lines around the outside. That is weird. Hold on. What's going on? Brush. Here we go. You're going to see... Sorry, had a little hiccup here. You're going to see thick lines, like right here around the corners. It's pretty given when you go around a corner, you thicken the line. And then as you come out of that turn, out of that corner, just like you're driving a car, you're going into the turn. When you hit the turn, your back is pressing the back of the car. The wheels are pressing into the ground, and they're requiring more grip. Okay? And then as you get out of the turn, you speed up and accelerate a little bit. You know what I'm talking about when you're driving your car? It's the same principle when you're doing the line drawing, okay? Um, I found this one example here. Let me see if it shows up somewhat high res. Because this is sort of the process that we've been working on in this class. I found this on Pinterest, okay? Thumbnail, rough comp and perspective, phase one. Phase two, the line drawing now. Coming back into this. So if I zoom into this and look, see there's thicker lines. Let me draw on top of it. There's some thicker lines down here on the outside outside here and then when you get in the inside there's some nice thin lines in here that are sort of variating okay so again you get you get it there's not a hundred percent rule that i mean sometimes yeah you can have some areas of contrast for the plating but look at what he's doing over here he's getting these sort of real quick thick and thin lines and then he's coming in in here and he has thinner lines okay and so even out here look there's a definite outline form which is part of that outside line and then you get in here and there's a thin line and then maybe a little heavier line. So you just have to rotate that line weight. I'm looking at a lot of your guys' work and a lot of you aren't doing that. You're just doing this. It's like you're not even on a Cintiq. These are pressure sensitive Cintiqs, right? That allow you to get in there and go thick to thin and thick to thin, all right? And if you don't have that type of brush, you shouldn't be using the stock brushes. I've already given out my own brushes in this class. To students, so you should be using one of the brushes in my brush pack for Photoshop is that drawing brush. Now, that's Photoshop, right? If you're using Sketchbook Pro, Sketchbook Pro's pencil is already set to do this. So if I just switch over here to Sketchbook, oops, hold on, minimize this. If I switch to Sketchbook Pro right here, that's what's so great about this program is the pencil does this for you already. Look, thick, thin, thick, thin, 
It's already an established brush. I can do that very easily. I'm going around and I'm looking at people's work and I'm seeing this. <clears throat> My name is Gorg. Right? These huge, thick lines. Really? I mean, that's not what this is about, guys. You have to have, you, we're not drawing lines like this that are super thick and pressing into the pencil because we're mad at our parents. No, we're not. Okay? We want to have thick and thin lines. Look, I'm using my ruler now. And I can go thick by pressing it and then I can lighten up and then go press down again. Look, a thick to thin line there, done very easily. So when I'm looking at your work, this is something I'm gonna grade you on. If you don't have thick and thin line on your piece, you're doing something wrong. It shouldn't be one heavy line. Now, we'll get back to this in a minute, but what, not to pick on anybody, I grabbed a couple student pieces, right? This line isn't quite thick or thin. This line's sort of all over the place. No offense, Julian. But you're sort of thick here, and then it gets really thin where it's almost not meeting. Just remember the golden rule. Thick on the outside, and try to get thinner on the inside, and it'll read and it'll work very well. Okay, I'm going to come back to this in a minute. I'm going to draw on top of it in a second. But I just wanted to show you the rest of these examples here that I had. Okay, so when we look at that one, right, then we move from there. Look, there's sort of our finished line paths that this artist has done, right? It looks nice. Then after that, you go into tone. This is how people work conceptually. This is what I'm trying to teach you. After you go into tone like this, you pick a direction of light. Light's coming from one side, right? This is our next phase we're going to do on this project. You're going to take your ship. You're going to come in. You're going to pick a direction of light coming. That's going to indicate dark side, light side. Once you've indicated that, you come back in. You can do a quick overlay or pass a color. That's how you get to this phase. Then you come back. You put on some details. You put on some other lights. You're done. But you see that in order to get to this, we were working back here. That's where we started. You guys have had a couple weeks to get to this. You guys are supposed to be here. 40% of you right now are not at that point right here. A nice solid line drawn. Okay. Some of you guys, so, and then some of you have some design issues happening as well. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay. Let me come back here. Um, I'm going to switch now. You know what? I had this one image. Hold on. Go back to Photoshop. I had a couple other images I wanted to show you here really quick that I thought were very nice. Okay. Uh, we looked at Doug's work. Okay. Okay. This is already up on the block, this piece right here for this project. Okay. Look at the line quality in this. The outside line is faded, but see these nice thin lines that are in here? Okay. Let me draw them blue so you can see it. See these lines that are like very thin details here that are wrapping the shape? Okay, those are important lines that are there to indicate what's happening. Look at this line that goes along here, drops down, comes here, comes over, down. That's wrapping over the form. That's a really important line. One of the purposes of contour lines is to dictate and show form. Okay, so by coming in now, in this particular piece, the artist has painted out the outside line. So now the shape is holding it. That's totally fine. You can still come in and place line in. Look at this line in here. Thick to thin line. And then it sort of wraps over that and it leaves. Without these little line indications. See, I call this, what do I call it? I sort of had my own little term once. Little interior detail lines. Or I call it planking lines. Like little, think of it as like wooden planking. But on a ship it might be the metal contours of the surface. Or it might be... A difference between this, if this surface is a high grade plastic and then this is a metal, uranium or something, right? It might be the differences. Look back here, this is like an exposed engine area. So we might not see the line. This is where the value of shape is going to come in to hold the object together, okay, which is fine. There's still a light source on this piece. So if I look at this, where's the light coming from? Anyone? It's actually coming from this direction of my arrow right here. It's coming downward like that. The light's hitting on the surface here. It's hitting on the surface here. And then this is shadow. So light, so light, shadow. Light, shadow. We'll talk about that in another lecture, but this is what we're going towards. Okay? All right. So look at these little examples. These are thumbnails. Yes, you can do this very quickly in thumbnails. Look at how fantastic these are. Look at the outside line is thicker. Inside line gets a little bit thinner. There's indication of light. There's little highlights on there, okay? This is the level you can achieve through your drawing if you just practice and you're doing these. You can knock out a whole page of thumbnails like this where you just start with a shape. You go in, you put a couple lines, come in with a, a white highlighter, Prismacolor pencil, gouache, whatever it is. 
you want to use, and then you come in and you just punch those up. That's it. That's simple. And you get some fantastic, amazing results. Okay, and then I discovered this little guy. I thought this was pretty cool, right? Look at the line that's in here. Look at look at the contour line wrapping around the shape right here. Okay, now the outside line has been taken away. There's a little bit of it in there, but most of it's been taken away because the value of the shape is reading, okay? But look at the line in here. Look at that little thin line that comes over the top of that canopy. Look at this line. This line's really important. It's very faint. It goes here, it dips, and it comes here. It sort of comes up over, and then it sort of comes down in here and goes across. That's a contour line to indicate how that what's happening on that contour. Without that line, without this line in here, and then this other contour line, that contour line, that contour line, that line, that little shape. Without those little lines, that would feel flat like a pancake. Okay? So you have to be able to get into your work and imagine taking, you know, a piece of yarn or, uh, you know, wrap or rubber band and wrapping it around part of the contours to get your shapes to read. Okay? Now, let's jump over here. I have a student's piece right here. I'm going to draw on top of it for just a little bit here. So I'm going to switch back to Sketchbook Pro. Okay? So here's a ship that a student was working on. Couple problems on this ship. I really like this front area. I think is fine. Okay? Let me add another layer here. So what I'm going to do, look at what happens when I get rid of the grid. What happens to the ship? It's sort of there, but it sort of falls apart. Do you see that? That's because when the grid is there, the grid is actually holding it to, part of it together. Okay, so what we need to do is I need to come into this. If I take off that line, I need to come into this drawing and I need to start addressing contour lines. So where are contour lines that could exist in here? This is actually pretty easy. So one thing, let's go back to the design issue. I have one issue with this design right now that could be easily changed is this right here. These are keys. What is that shape right there? What is that? It's a primitive. What kind of shape? It's a basic rectangle. That's it. It's, a, it's just a rectangle. It's like super duper simple. It doesn't, you could push part of your, your shape language outside of that realm and not just give a rectangle. And let me show you an example of what I would do. Okay. So like if I take that rectangle, I'm going to dull down his master drawing. I'm going to draw on top of this now. I have my pencil. Look at my pencil. Thick and thin. Look at how beautiful that is. Okay. It does that thick and thin. Pressure sensitivity. I go around to some of your guys' work and it scares me because all I see is this. Uh, that's <laughs> too thick. Okay. So watch. If I take that shape right there, let me lower the brush down just a little bit. So imagine if I did this. So I'm going to keep most of what he has here, but I'm going to add some details into that. So look, I'm going to cap this off right here. Where this comes around here, I'm going to bring this here, and then I'm going to bring this back across. Okay. Then I'm going to wrap a line, bring this down, and then I might, I'm going to round these little corners here, I'm going to round that corner, come down around here. But I like to do these little angular things where I'm going to introduce a little angle right here, it comes down like that. You see how I did that? Really quick. Okay. Now, the next set of lines, I'm going to deviate a little bit. I'm going to keep them in a rectangular format. I'm just going to drop them down a little bit. So as I come in here and put this next line here, I see how I just dropped it down just a little bit underneath what he had? That's it. I'm going to do a really thin line right there. I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to raise that line up a little bit, deviate it just a teeny bit there. Come across here, okay. Now, now I'm going to add the back element to that, okay. So I'm going to make this back element extrude it out just a little bit more and pull it past. So watch how I do this. I'm going to come over here with my ruler, really lightly, and I'm going to sort of bring it out a little heavier and recede that line back to here. Coming up, wrap around that shape. I missed part of that round curve in there, but that's okay. I'm going to get it right here. Receive that back to the vanishing point. Going to drop that down, raise that up, bring that corner back around. Okay. And now, because of that, I can actually put a little interior line in here like this. 
something like this. Okay, so now let me get rid of, hold on, let me put a thin line in here. Let me keep part of what the student had. Okay, now here's something you got to watch, Julian. You have these little fins in here. Yeah. I you see that? that? Look, I'm going to do this real quick. Is that going the right way? No. no. Your ship's perspective is going that way. So your lines are all off in there. Those lines have to be on. Okay. All we're doing in this class is taking traditional drawing principles and applying them in a digital format. That's it. That's the whole purpose of this, right? So look, I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to just simplify it. I'm going to put the inside little thruster area there. Now I'm going to get rid of your line drawing real quick. Okay, and just go back to that piece I have. Look at that piece I have. You see the thick and thin line quality in it? That's just the thick and thin line pass right now. Now I could come into it and then I could put little details like maybe in the side here. I put, oops. Let's try that again. Oh, that's why I'm on the wrong layer. Let me command Z there a couple times. Here we go, my bad. Okay, so now I put that little interior line to show that. I have that little line on the back here. I'm going to put a little outside edge line going there nice and thin. Now I could come in and I can wrap a little details. So what are details? When I think of edges of metal, when I look at planes, and I think of the way sheet metal or these little indications might be, and I know someone's going to throw this at me. They're going to go, well, it's a futuristic plane or ship I have, and I don't have those lines. No, you're putting in those lines because they're suggestive, they're informative to suggest what's happening to the contour and what's taking place. So look, now I could come back in. Let's say I, he's going to keep those little thrusters. But if I just come back in and I just put a couple lines across there, I leave out the angle parts. So here, let me just do that real quick. I'm just eyeballing this. It's not mine, so. All right, I just did that real quick. Now I'm going to throw an exterior line on top of that. So watch. I'm going to come over here and think, hey, maybe a line comes over here, wraps down here. This comes down, and then it banks out this way, comes back here, and then maybe it zigzags back over like that. Okay. That little line detail, that's a supportive line now on my main shape. So that's a supportive detail that's adding a little bit more. Let's do that going back. Now I'm going to come over here. Now what if I have a little insignia on it, like a little triangle or a little square? Don't write a name or something. It's too hard in there. Just a real basic insignia. So a lot of times on planes and something you might see, I do this, I learned some of this from Robotech back in the day. They used to do, do this quite a bit is they'd put a little line like this and they put a little bit of an angle on it like this. You see that? Now, once I have that, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my ruler here. I'm going to take my Cintiq. I'm going to lightly draw a light line there. I'm going to bring that line, arch it back up here, bring it right there, and I'm going to round that and bring that across like so. Okay, now when I did that, my ruler slipped for a minute. There it goes, like that. Okay, there. Do you see how I have that line now? Am I done? No, I could put a couple more lines on there, right? Look, I might have a little line that comes across here, wraps over, drops down, just comes out, and just comes down around. That's it. That's simple. And then when it rounds the corner right here, it comes across like this, okay? Do you see the thick and thin line inside that right now? Okay, so Julian, I'm going to turn on yours, and I'm going to go back and turn mine off. See the difference? You just have a cube there. It's just a shape. Carve into it a little bit. There's nothing wrong with having a cube shape, but you can easily transform it into that right there. Add little elements, extrude the ends, bring something smaller out of it. Feel free to carve into that. In fact, if I wanted to take it a step further right now and really carve into that, let's do this. Watch. Take my eraser. Okay. Oops. Command Z because I did that on the wrong layer again. There we go. Look, I'm going to just cut right into it like that. And I take my, my ruler right here, I'm going to draw a line coming across here. I'm going to bank it down like this. And I'm going to bring that line thin up back to the top. I'm going to come across here. 
and then I, what I'm going to do is start to drop this, but then I had this idea of, hold on, I need to fix that little area right there. I had an idea that maybe there's an inner, thinner piece coming across. So look, if I come over here, I draw a line up, I draw a line over across like this, and I'm going to draw a line back this way. There, you see how I just cut into it? I just cut into it and I added a little section that makes it a little bit more appealing. Now I want to emphasize that a little bit, right? Watch, Julian, little detail here. I'm going to take a line, go across here, drop it down in this direction like that, angle it right in here, bring that line back up, and then bring it over. See, now I just emphasize that little area. Okay, it's just really simple. So. Look at that thruster right now, and then when I turn back on your line drawing, look at the difference. If that was there, do you see how it changes the whole look and feel of the ship? So if I start coming along to other parts of this ship, and looking at reference is going to guide me along, my line drawing is really going to transform that overall shape and feel of that ship. Now, if you're having a problem with this, and you're like, well, I don't know what to do. Phil, you looked at Robotech. That's not fair. Okay. Pull up an image of Robotech. Go find some reference to look at. In fact, look, I'll do it right now with you. Here, I'm going to switch over here. I'm going to jump over. I'm going to grab, um, it's on our class blog. But look, I'm just going to go over here to Google, and I'm just going to type in airplanes. You guys are creating a, a flying craft, right? Let's go to images. Now, it's going to show me far views of airplanes, so I need to be specific. I'm going to say fighter jets. There we go. Now I can click a couple of these. I'm trying to find, so let's say fighter jets, okay, up close. Then you'll get people that went to a air show. Aha, now I look. I don't know what to draw. Look, right there, there it is. Oops, there it is, no. Um, look at that canopy right there. Look at that, it has that interior line around there. Do you know what that is? Oh, is that part of the? I think that's part of the explosives. It makes it blow around um, but look at the look at the little rivets in there look at the body that meets look at the little contour look at that thick and thin line that goes around part of that outside okay now look at this here's more there's so much reference out there you have to be able to grab it go find it if you're stuck just don't sit there and go I'm stuck and I'm gonna put my paper away and walk away no you're responsible to go out look at that reference look at those little slit things right there Aren't those awesome? I don't even know what the hell they're for, but they look awesome. Okay? Look at those little things that are slit right there. I mean, I could put that into my image. Look at that up close. Look at that line right there that goes over the canopy. That's part of the canopy closing. Look at this little detail area here with little rivets in it. Okay? Look at this little thin thingy thing that we were just talking about. Look at the line that comes over. So if I take a look at my reference and I minimize that, I go back to my drawing. Now I can come in here and I'm all hitting Command Plus because I think I'm in Photoshop, right? Now I can come over here. I can move to another part of the drawing. I'm going to knock it down a little bit. I'm going to come back to my area and I can apply that in here to like his canopy. Okay, so if I look at this canopy and then I looked at one thing I noticed is his is just completely straight across, yeah. right? So that's a little boring. Right? So if I want to make it a little bit more interesting, what if his canopy does this? I'm going to do the outside line first. So I'm going to imagine a line coming up here and ending to here in the middle. So if I were to draw a dotted line going sort of up like that. And, and then I'm going to come over here and take my, my pen to sort of go thick. It's right there. And then I'm going to bring this across. Let me drop down the size a little bit. Just to like there. So now I rounded it. Remember, 90s are bad. 90s are no fun. So I rounded that, and then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to sort of wrap that line around here. Now, this is something I like to do a lot. I have these little theories that I've developed in my sketchbook. I like to break a line, meaning that if I were to keep wrapping this canopy over there, if I find a way to break that line, it makes it much more appealing and interesting, and this is how I'm going to do that. Um, he's actually sort of doing it here, but... Watch, if I bring this line forward like this, when I get down here to the front part of the canopy, by breaking that line, if I come in and I do this, it 
that's what I call breaking the line is I broke the pattern of the line and I put something in front of it like this. And then I could do it over here as this line recedes back this way. I could come back here and put another element. in front of that line. It makes it look more appealing than just the line going across. Now I can get in there and then I could, those little interior lines that he had, I can start to divvy some of that stuff up. Okay, so if I look at this, now I could come in here and decide, well, I have sort of a rounded canopy now, but let's keep what he had though and let's just try to make it interesting. He had this line come forward. And wrap around to there. Okay, but now I'm going to go ahead, let's, I'm going to bring that interior line. Sorry, this is what I hate about these big Cintiqs is I can't spin them. Yeah. You guys can spin yours. Oops, and then I slipped right there. There we go, okay. Now, look, I can take that little center line that drops down. Maybe it comes down to like right here and I might put a little angled element in like this. And then I might drop a line in between the two like that. Okay, then I might put another interior plate glass inside there. Okay, then I might come over here and maybe that line, I'm trying to think, maybe it dips down a little bit, comes this way and curves back in here. So maybe then right here, there's another window. That window is going to go to here. Maybe it's a little bit longer. And I might decide to end it right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I want to put the little plates in there, right? So now I might come over here and I might say maybe there's a little segment that comes out this way, a little line, another little segment. And then there's an interior plate window. Right in there. Do you see how I did that? Okay. That's a detail I'm putting in. So some of you guys did all different types of ships. Some of you guys had like a floating ship that looked like a pirate ship. Some of you guys had more of another type of ship. You know, you need to be able to get those lines on there, but what's really important is that your detail lines have to match part of the perspective. So now, see how I had that little line going across? I sort of like that line because it adds a little bit more to the body, but I don't want it to be so straight. So what I might do is I might come in like right here and erase a little segment right there. And then I might throw a line coming in this direction like this. Wrapping, I'm imagining a line coming around the top and going like that. So now I sort of get a little bit on the top. I might come in here now and then throw another line that comes up over here. And drops down there. Okay, now I can add, remember those little fin thingies I just saw, right? So I know the center line's right here. So if I go off of that center line just a little bit, I might put one little fin thingy right here. Another little fin thingy there. Another one there. Another one there, okay. Now I might even add on to that. I wanna encapsulate that into one piece. So I might draw a little line that comes out might wrap that with a rubber band that comes down like so. Okay. And then what's cool is now I have this angled little line in here. Do you see this? See that line that goes this way? I like that. I might take that shape, bring it down here, come back over here, bring that down a little bit. I like that type of little detail that I put.
there. Okay, so do you see what's happening already? You see how I'm changing? Julian, I'm taking the lines you had. I'm just adding a little bit more to them. Okay, so look, I put a couple little details here. Maybe up here, there's a little round cylinder shape right up in here. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of other little details. Maybe I draw a line that comes this way, one that comes this way, and then it's sort of, oops. Let's get that smaller. I was thinking maybe it recedes back a little like this. So if this one was over here, it would be something about like that. Okay. All right, and then maybe to connect them, I find the center line. There's a dot there. Here, do you see that little detail I put up on there? Just very quick, nothing too much. I'm wrapping little lines, but look at the difference now. When I come over here and I take his underdrawing away, do you see how that feels real? There's those little details, there's little panelings, there's little edges. So in my sketchbook the other day when I was drawing stuff, I was coming up with all these variations to use. And just there's so many to, to explain. I think one of the simplest basics that you can use is the, the, the policy or the, the theory of a large against small. It's just the basic opposites. And so all you have to do on your line drawing is think of something like this. You're going to have a large area against a small area of detail. That's it. So do you see right here how I have my small area of detail right there? Look, and then I could come in, I can enhance this area a little bit more. So if I enhance this, so I have a small area of detail. Might even put a little couple rivets in here. Right? Then I have a large area, no detail. Okay? And then I go back and do the same thing. So here I was putting detail in one area, and I have a large area around it that has limited or less detail, right? Okay? So if I come back and take a look, so let's just take a look at another piece of the ship here. So look at that whole front end there. That's a perfect example. So now I could finish that front end. Look at how the shape comes out there. That's a cool looking shape. Okay? Um, Julian, you have a good ship here that you designed. It's just adding these little tweaks into it. So how do I, one way to use that large against small in terms of your, your linear detail is doing it to the outside of the object and letting the inside be a little bit heavier with less line, okay, except the supporting line. So let me show you what I mean by that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to come over to the shape right here, and I'm just going to add on to what Julian already put in here. I'm going to take a line, move it across. I'm going to bend that line in a little bit. I'm going to take it, make a thick line going across here. Sorry, my ruler slipped a little bit there, but that's all right. There, I put a little outside line like that. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to wrap this line here. Oops. Like that and then I'm going to bring part of this line now what I don't like is I'm still there's like a lot of 90s happening in there and I don't like 90s in my design so I'm going to see if I can't round this corner a little bit more and then I'm going to see if I can bank it out maybe in the opposite direction or something so let me let me continue off of what Julian had here I'm going to take this line and I'm going to bank that cut into a little bit more around it in here and I'm going to round that edge in there okay and then he had it come straight back up, sort of. So what I'm going to do is bring it up to about here. And then I'm going to round it a little bit more. And sort of try to lightly come in here. Oops. Sorry, my pen's slipping. I'm not used to drawing on this MT. Round that edge in there. And then where it comes in here, I'm just going to round it. And then I'm going to erase that little interior line that's right in there. Okay, now I'm going to put more detail in there so I have a detailed area against a large shape. So now to put more detail, that's the easy part. I might just come in here and say, you know, let, let me take away part of this little drawing and see what I have. Okay, see right there? I'm going to bring this line in a little bit lower. Oops, I did that on the wrong. Hold on. 
keep switching layers, my bad. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in here and let's just add some little details here. I might come over here and when I do this, I like bumping out the line a little bit. I'm gonna erase a little segment of that line. Bump out the line just a little bit, bring that little segment in, bring it back down, take my ruler, sort of very lightly come back in here, go across like this, get a nice round end here, bump it up a little bit, and then maybe I'll take that back and then I'll round that right in there like that, okay? So let me get rid of part of his drawing right there. Now with that drawing erase, now I could come back in and look at my little details that I want to put in here. It's a little bit easier, it's not as busy. So now I might come in here and, um, let me see, put some little thin lines in here. Okay, so you see what that did right there? I put that, I'm getting meticulous here. Let me fix that. I, my ruler slipped a little bit there and I didn't realize it looking at it. Okay, there. Oh, I did it again, dang it. That's the one thing I hate about a Cintiq is I try to get, it needs to be calibrated just a little bit higher. There we go, just like that. So I have that. Now I'm going to come over here and I might put a little, Little, take a little segment out of there. Okay, so to see how I've put all that detail. So I have all that detail, that's plenty of detail right there, and then the rest just needs to be big shapes. So now I could come in with a really light line, sort of go across part of that body right here, and then I'm just gonna follow the contour of his ship. And so I'm gonna imagine maybe the contour of his ship does this, maybe it comes up in here. It goes across, maybe it dips down, and then where that hits there, there's a break, and then the line's going to come here, and just go across like that, okay? Then I could come in here, and I could break that line in the middle, and I could do something like this, and just, see that? It adds another element, so now I'm going to draw for that. I'm going to come back over here, around that little guy. There we go, okay? And then let's do the same thing here. I want something in here to indicate very thin line, right? Am I gonna do this right now? Am I gonna wanna get in here and go, yeah, there's a plane going across there. Nope, that's too <laughs> thick, right? There's a line, there's detail, I'm gonna have rivets right here. Nope, see, it kills it. It's too heavy, it can't be that heavy. It has to be nice and thin. So now here, I could just do, man, I could just think of whatever. I could just bring a line in. Like, I like doing these diagonal lines that are not straight. What I mean by that is, watch, I'll bring a line back here, and then I sort of carve it back this way a little bit, bring it back up here, carve it back in a little bit, and bring it over and wrap the form a little. See how I did that? Adds a little bit of information to it. Now, if I split this, what would be something I don't want to do is, I, now I'm coming back and I'm looking at this line, the distance from here to here is almost the same now. So I want to adjust that real quick, okay? Because I added another line in there, I want to change it. So what I might do now is erase part of that outside line. Actually, that was sort of cool like that. Leave that one in there and then bring this, arch that line down a little bit like that, that's it. Just changing the directions of my little linear detail. Now I might bring a line in here, right on the edge, put one on there. So that's sort of all hooking up. And then I might decide to come in and just sort of bank another line off this contour. Come in here, bank it going down, angle it a little bit, and then curve it back like that. Okay? That's it. So then I come back. And let's just look at the difference, right? If I turn on his line drawing, do you see how it's coming together now? So do you see how your ship is really pretty cool, Julian. The shape there is really nice, but I have to be able to go in, once I take that away, 
see all the line is holding it together, all those little interior lines. I haven't even done rivets yet. I can come back and do little rivets. I can come back and do little insignias. I can put little handles on there. There's all types of little things I can still come back and do. Okay, and I, got, I have to give credit to part of this. I learned part of this from copying and looking at Robotech and Macross when I was a kid. I was always drawing it on like little post-its and stuff, and I would just take a number, a number seven pencil, mechanical pencil, I would do my outside lines in number seven, and then I would take a five and a three and do the interior lines really thick and thin. When I started working in entertainment and in animation, what do you know, it was the same principle being used um, on line cleanup for props, for environments, for cars, vehicles. It's all the same thing just being, you know, um, repeated by other artists, okay? All right, so I'm going to leave this demo here. I have another student, you know, uh, file that I can maybe do the next day. But we need to get to this point where you guys finish this line drawing. That took me 40 minutes talking. So that's, you know, I wanted you guys to do a minimum over the break was to get caught up and have the line drawing done. So that was like an hour worth of work to get the line drawing done. Some of you guys didn't even do that. So the one thing I'm going to be looking for in the rest of this class is going to be the thick and thin line on top of this. Now, after this, we're going to pick a light source. We're going to go in with tone, and we're going to start drawing the shadows. Um, and, and then we'll do a little bit of rendering on top of it. Not much, a little bit of a rendering pass. I'm not going to turn it into a full illustration and render, but it's just to have something that's presentable to a client because I think the good example was here um, when I showed those thumbnails like that. That's a presentable image to a client because the client can not only see the interior lines, he knows the reflections, he knows what the shapes feel like, there's highlights on there. That's great. He can pick one or two of those ships and go with that. I'm walking you guys through this process for your first time um, that are brand new and now you're getting incorporated into it. That way you'll be able to pick up the pace as you move along and your drawing gets to a faster level. Okay, So we'll see you back in a little bit.